I was just a little bit stronger. Or smarter, maybe. Smarter would help. Welcome back to the Montana Garage. As usual, I have got nothing done for the last few weeks. Uh, I spent the last three weekends, three kind of long weekends actually, chasing bull elk here in the mountains of Montana with my son. Now, I know I may look like I am, you know, what do you think, 26, 28 years old and the picture of health and fitness, uh, but that's not reality. That's just, that's just camera magic. In reality, I'm quite old. And uh, although I'm in decent shape, I'm no match for an 18 year old kid that's been a hockey player his whole life. That kid can run up and down mountains and it doesn't even phase him. It was a long three weeks, or it was just weekends, but man, uh, I was lucky to come out alive. So for three weekends, we carried our camp on our back. We had just went up in the mountains and uh, we slept wherever we ended up. So we got, uh, let's see, we got hot, we got cold, we got wet from sweat drenching my body, we got wet from ice cold rain. Uh, let's see, we slept on the side of mountains that were really not good places to sleep. Um, we ate backpacking food. Uh, we had virtually no distractions or no social media. Uh, so that was awesome. And uh, we uh, we had a good time. It was hard. If, if elk hunting is not for the faint of heart, I wouldn't really recommend it. But uh, one way or another, I came out of it alive. I spent like nine quality days with my son. So in that regard, the hunt was a huge success and I wouldn't have traded it for the world. On top of that, on the last day we we're out, uh, my son actually finally uh, arrowed a six point bull. Some people, whenever I talk about hunting, I get people that are, are not into that and that's fine. Everybody has their own uh, feelings about that and that's not here or there. That's not what this video is about. People ask me about it, so I'm sharing it. Uh, I totally understand other people's points of view, but uh, our point of view is where hunting has been a way of our life and it's uh, it's not, it's not, people think it's just killing animals, that's not what it's all about. And uh, if that's what you think, I just recommend you kind of look into it a little further. Regardless of all that, uh, my son finally got his bull and uh, super happy and proud of him, that kid. I don't know anybody that's worked as hard as him to make that uh, that happen. So anyways, go uh, check out the community page if you haven't been over there. I have a couple pictures posted. I may or may not share a little bit of video from the trips. Uh, people have asked about it. So I might do that here. I might start another channel kind of for our adventures or uh, I might do nothing. Anyways, enough said about that. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. So as mentioned, nothing has changed it. Well, Something has changed out here in the Montana garage. Finally got the wheels and tires mounted and uh, I'm getting ready to do some welding on the door. So that's kind of for spark protection and kind of just so you guys don't see them just yet. So we got, uh, what I will show you is uh, the front ones are kind of skinny. So we got skinnies. The rear ones, well, those are the same ones that always, but the rear ones, the new rear ones are hiding over here. Hopefully I didn't just show you something there. I will show you that they are big and they are fat. So that's all you get to see for now. I have to I have to pull the rear end out and put those big fat tires under there so then I can measure, you know, side to side for the exact width of my rear end. I think I kind of have it figured out. There's a calculator online that I use, but uh, just to be sure I don't have any screw ups and everything fits, uh, it's one of the things I'm gonna do soon is pull the rear, set those tires under there and make my measurement so then I can order, uh, I'm gonna order a four nine inch under there so that's coming up but today's project door gaps on this side uh, I'm not gonna go into super detail because we just did that in the other video but uh, showing you kind of where we're starting pretty much no gap super tight super tight a little wobble here and then it kind of does this thing where it gets wider and then you know from pretty good to a little tight and super tight so I'm just going to uh, set you up on fast motion. Let me grab, we'll talk about the, we already talked about this in the last video, but we'll use our big kid, kid, big kid blocks gap tool to uh, scribe a line on the door. We'll grind to that line, weld it, grind it again, and hopefully make it much better than it is. So uh, we'll just do a little fast motion on that. I'll stop along the way if there's anything interesting. Otherwise, you can refer to the last video about the techniques I'm using, and uh, let's get going on that. The other thing I need to do is, there's a big clutch spring laying down there. I don't know if you can see it, everything's black in here. I gotta get that installed, and once that's 
installed. Then I believe I can install the steering column because that's kind of the last hard thing I knew need to do up under the under the dash there where the steering column will be in the way. Those are the upcoming projects and uh, sounds a lot easier than chasing my son up a mountain so I'm looking forward to it. All right trying to get started here. If you remember from the other video for this gap I sliced the quarter panel and tried to move this over and uh, this is pretty tight so we could attempt that same thing but for the most part this line the door jam is pretty good until it gets down here you can see this spot kind of shaped like this. This is, I believe this is actually lead in here from when this car was kind of creased down this side at some point. And uh, kind of from about here to here, it's kind of got a little flat spot. So the first thing I'm doing is I've already done quite a bit. I'm hitting that with a little sandpaper to try to recreate the curve. The curve of the door is pretty good here. So you can just see where it's kind of flat right in there. So I'm trying to, before I match the door to this, I want to get this how I want it. So I'm trying to ease in, in a little more shape right there. Other than that, this I think is in pretty good shape and we'll just trim the door to match. A little more hand sand in here and then we'll get to the real stuff. One thing I didn't do when I did the other side that I'm gonna do here, I've already scribed a couple little lines with my block tool laying down there. I've messed around, I got a couple like right here. There's, it's hard, they're hard to see on video, but I actually have two separate lines. I'm gonna color the edge of my door black with the, just a Sharpie and then uh, let that set for a second and dry. And then I'll scrape that line. Hopefully it'll be a little easier for both, you know, me and you guys to see. So when I'm grinding to it, a little more consistent, hopefully. So let's give that a try. Black line, and then I hit it with the uh, block tool. A little better. You still, it depends on how you hold the. Where'd he go? All right, I just had that block tool. I didn't even leave anywhere. How'd it disappear? Losing my mind. Did I have the door open? Anyways, if you get one of these big kid block tools, they're really helpful, but they just, they walk away on you. They just disappear. Um, they vanish into thin air. Sometimes they're in your hoodie pocket, so don't forget to look there. Uh, anyways, got the line on there. If you can see up here, there's a couple spots where there's kind of two lines, and that's, I mean, so this is how this guy works. And I guess, you know, kind of depends on the angle of your dangle there. So if you try to keep her a little more straight up and down, I guess. Anywho, where I have two lines, I'm gonna go to the inside line so we don't go far. Um, so let's get the grinder out. Like I said, I'll just fast motion this. I think everything else we're doing is pretty much the same we did before. Grind to the line. It's going to cut through this little fold over here. And then we gotta clamp that all together. Weld it all together. Then we'll put another line on it and grind back to that line and hopefully it will be super pretty. And here we are after welding. Looks like we're close enough everywhere. So now somehow I just have to uh, make that look nice again. We'll grind her flat out here on the outside edge first, and then I'll use that little tool, grab a line, grind back to that line, and uh, celebrate, because it'll be pretty. Fingers crossed.
as usual, I get distracted doing other stuff throughout the day. It's dark, but I have this door mostly done. We gapped that one, we gapped the top, and we did this side. The bottom needs a little work right here where the seam is. There's gonna be some filler there. It's just a hair big and then it needs filler there. So I think I'm just gonna leave that and then you can see where the gap tool is. Uh, from there over, it gets a hair tight. So I'm just gonna put a slice in here, pound that down a little bit to where the gap tool fits, stitch her back together and call that good. And then uh, we'll move on to the trunk. Safety first, wearing my badass uh, grinding hood from Benchmark Abrasives. A couple of you folks have actually gone to the link in my uh, video description and purchased one of these things, so thank you for that. Uh, it doesn't tell me who does that. I can see that somebody bought it, and I make a few, I'd like to say a few bucks, but usually a few cents off of stuff. So yeah, if you went to the link and you bought either this or something else, send me an email, and I'll send you some stickers from Montana Garage as a way of saying thank you. So uh, yeah, go to the video description, click the link, go to Amazon, buy this or buy something else, buy anything you want. When you click through my link, I'm going to get some commission. Send me an email, montanagarage55 at gmail.com, and I'll send you free Montana Garage stickers. Win, 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 win. Well, I got the slice in there. I got her bent down to where she's got to be. I went and turned the welder on, and I just realized I am almost out of welding gas. It's like the gauge. It's pretty much on E. I mean, it doesn't say E, but it's all the way at the bottom. And, uh, Hopefully I got enough in there to stitch this up. If not, I guess we're waiting until Monday to put this back together. I got too much stuff in my way, stored in my life. Can't see nothing. Don't know where my light's at. There it is. I'm glad I grabbed that light because I can see that it's a little, a little off there. My other hammer, my glasses. I guess I wasn't ready for nothing. My little gaffer tool back in there. I'm gonna pry it down just a snizzle frigil. Tommy's just gonna do that. It's... I think I need to actually slice a little more out of there. the little shit. <laughs> Haven't seen Moose for a couple days, so that's not good news, but it's happened before. Hopefully he's just out doing cat stuff. And he'll show up sooner or later. More welding. I just got done grinding and dressing that weld. It kind of disappeared. Time for your Montana Garage Tri-5 Tech Tip. This is a clutch spring. It's got some extra stuff on it that's not standard operating, uh, or it's not standard, you know, dress. It's uh, It's got some, you know, some accessories currently that don't normally belong in the spring. Uh, if anybody's ever tried to install one of these, that is a bugger of a spring. So it's a clutch return spring. I actually never actually ran one. I just had a little spring on the, down by the bell housing or whatnot. And uh, when I got a new clutch assembly from my buddy Craig from Tri-5 Mob, it came with this uh, clutch spring. And it is a bugger to install. 
but I'm smart, so I did some Googling, and there's a few different ways to do it. Uh, one option that I found was to put it in a vise and bend it and put washers in it, therefore lengthening the spring, which should give me enough length to get it on. Now, when I put it in the vise and bent it, to try to put these in. You know, I could get three or four in, and then as I'd bend it, the, the other one would fall out. So what I did is I put a few in that way, and then I took a hammer, held the washer with the pliers, and uh, I should have showed you, but my battery was dead. Um, it's gonna die any second again. And then I used the hammer to pound the washer in. So I got a bunch of them in here. I already tried it a couple times, and I just needed to add a few more to get enough extra length. So let's see if it works this time. Um, this hooks, you can Google and get a, a diagram. But see that little hook right up in there? Uh, let's see if I can get my little pointer up there. Get my light. So this little guy right here that I'm touching is just a wire hook. So it hooks on this uh, brace, part of the dash there. And then there's a you know a loop on the back of that. And then the other piece, the other end of it, hooks to the clutch assembly here. So uh, I probably need two hands. So I'm going to set you guys up looking at something in that general direction. Who knows if you're looking at what you're supposed to be looking at because I can't see the camera from here. Um, let's see, I think I want to go this way. So I reach up in here, I get the first hook on the, uh, the first end of the spring on the little hook. Oh, we're like, oh, it's so close. The thing is you just can't, the spring is so strong, you can't budget. I think I need to get like one or two more washers in there. Oh, it's so close. Let me, Maybe a pair of scripts that I can. All right, hold on. I'm gonna try to grab a pair of ice scripts and see if I can budget. I probably can't. I'm back with a pair of ice scripts, but it was kind of turned. Let's see if I can get it up here. There we go. Oh, it's like a millimeter away from going in. But that millimeter is probably gonna cost me. Oh, man. I was just a little bit stronger or smarter maybe smarter would help oh. Oh, oh man it like hooked ah. give myself a freaking hernia here you guys, what are you guys looking at i don't know either i like got it to hook but I didn't get, oh, now it popped out. All right, let's try this again. I should just go put another couple washers in it if I could, but. Ah, oh, see, it'll, I got the distance, but I can't get it to go in the, hmm, I didn't realize that was gonna be a bugger. It's almost like that should be turned the other way. Let's see, this is that way. Just won't go through the little. <sighs> All right, back to plan 12. We're gonna put another washer or two in there. And we're back with a few more washers. I got like washers, as many as I can get in there, I think. So I think I wanna go in like this. So the hook over there comes down. I gotta get this guy hooked up here. Beautiful. I looked at the diagram, it shows it with this hook going down. But there's just not room for the hook to go through the little... I wonder if I... For the tougher the nails... I'm gonna try to hook this side first, I guess. Well, I got it through going up. But now, I'm on the wrong side of something up there. Well, this isn't a very good tech tip. It was supposed to show you an easy way to do this. Apparently, there's not an easy way. All right, so that's the same thing. I got it in there, but I have to get on the other side of that bar. So I think I have to get the top one in first.
Oh, oh, I lost a washer. All right, I may have to take some other pieces loose here. I thought this was gonna work. My scripts are in the way there. Oh, I lost another washer. I think I lost another washer. Dropping like flies. Ah, well. All right, so the other method that I also haven't tried is you take one of these bolts loose and then that lets this arm pivot. Then you can get it in there and then you just gotta find a way to get the bolt lined back up. So we might have to try that. All right, again, I don't know if you can see this, but I decided to quit fighting with it and take this bolt out. So there's this is the clutch pedal and there's a bracket back here and that's where that spring has to hook. So this uh, bracket has two bolts. Uno, two. So I'm gonna take the bottom one out. That'll let this pivot down. I should be able to get the spring in there then, and then a matter of forcing this back up to get the bolt started. But I think that shouldn't be that bad because uh, washers in here. So that's what we're trying now. All right, so we still got the washers in the spring. I took the bracket loose, pivoted it down. Now I got the spring started. Sorry, I know it's hard to see anything up here, but hopefully if somebody else tries to do this, it might help them out someday. So. Uh, now I gotta get this pivoted back to there and try to get this bolt started. And again, I think that shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, well, let's see. Am I hooked on truck front up here? Front is good. So yeah, that is uh, that is definitely the way to do it. So this is the tech tip. Put the washers in the spring and then take the bolt loose. And then you don't have to give yourself a hernia trying to uh, force it on like I probably think I did. That does kind of hurt a little bit. I was struggling there. All right, now I just got to figure out. All right, so we got the bolt started. So there is a little bit of adjustment on this thing. I don't know, I'm just gonna kind of put it back where it was. I did have to loosen the top one too because it wouldn't pivot until. I'm upside down, I can never figure out which way is which to tighten and loosen stuff. Am I the only one? I think I'm going the right way. So I'm guessing now that when I depress the clutch, it should open that spring up and then we'll have like a jackpot of washers fall onto the floor. It'd be like we won, won some nickels at the casino or something. Hopefully. All right, make sure this top one's tight. What is going on? Okay, is it because it's not doing nothing? Here's the real tech tip. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I'm wondering now if it's because I got all these washers in here that the spring is longer than it's supposed to be and it's not actually serving its purpose because it should pull this right here and then we would expand it right here. So, all right. Well, Interesting. Now I gotta see how I can get these washers I got jammed in here out. Well, well, you know, this is, I thought, I thought I was teaching you guys something. Don't do what I do, that's what I'm teaching you. I'm gonna have to go get some pliers now and see if I can pull these up. Oh, dang it. <sighs> All right, well, I tried several different ways and I got about half the washers out of there. I can't get the rest of them. The spring still. Next day, back out in the Montana garage and uh, I was in the middle of my clutch spring tech tip. Tech tip. I don't even know how the hell to do it. I don't know how I'm supposed to be sharing a tech tip about it. I thought I was giving you guys a tech tip. Anyways, I was in the middle of that and my battery on the old GoPro died. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I did finish what I was doing. I did get the clutch spring installed. So this is gonna be the real tech tip. I'm gonna show you, well, I'm not gonna show you because it's already in. I'm not gonna take it back out, but I'm gonna tell you how to do it. 
or how I did it, maybe this portion of the video will actually help somebody. So the first thing you need to know is don't mess around with the bunch of the washers stuck in the spring. That's a waste of your time. I read that somewhere and it Whoever wrote that in the forums said it worked for them, but uh, did not work for me. So I guess you can try that. Didn't work for me. So let me show you how I did it. Crawl back under the uh, dash here. All right, try to figure out what you guys are looking at. Have a little bit of light on the subject. Should have been a little more prepared as usual. My light won't stick, there we go. So here we go, here's the spring. Like I said, it hooks. Up here underneath the, uh, I don't know, the speedometer, the little bezel or whatever, uh, right above the steering column. And then the other side hooks to this arm, which is on the clutch pedal. You saw me try to stick all the washers in there. Like I said, don't do that, that's a waste of time. There's two bolts right here on the clutch pedal. Take the bottom one out, loosen this one, and then this arm will pivot on the clutch pedal. I pivoted that way down and once it was pivoted down, and then I could get the spring in the uh, loop or whatever we got back here for the spring to go. So I put the spring in, and then you just have to force this back up in order to get the bolt hole lined up. Now, I tried pushing on it, and uh, I'm pretty darn strong. Not really, but I wasn't strong enough to do that. So when I was trying to find a way to, to do that, I was thinking I'd get in like a ratchet strap and ratcheting it around this brace here in this and you know ratcheting it up and that would suck it up but what i ended up doing is i just had the screwdriver laying here and i stuck the screwdriver in here and i was able to use that to just kind of you know i got some leverage on it and i was able to push that up and actually once it kind of went like to a certain spot then it just went like the spring caught or whatever and it just went all the way up it went up past where it needed to be and then I could just pull it by hand down and line up the hole. So it was actually pretty easy after I stopped trying to do it the hard way. So uh, that's how I did it. I hope that helps somebody. Now the thing that I've, like I said, I never had that spring in here before. I just had a spring, um, you know, down on the clutch linkage down by the bell housing and that made it spring back and forth or whatnot. But when doing some research on this, people said you should run this spring because not only does it, you know, spring the clutch pedal back up, you can see it got that spring in there so it's pushing the clutch pack back up but it's like a over center design or I don't know I read that somewhere I don't even know what that means but once you I guess make sense once you get like past center then it, it actually kind of assists like going down too like see it'll actually suck the clutch pedal down and then it also sucks it back up now the thing I don't really know about right now is it just stays down now I don't have it I put the clutch rod on I got that hooked to the z-bar but I'm missing the final piece of linkage. So I don't have a piece of linkage from the Z-bar to the clutch fork. So I'm assuming that once I have that in, the pressure from the clutch fork, you know, the pressure plate, the little arms in the pressure plate, whatever, will, will force this back up. Um, plus I'll we'll have a spring down there too as well. But anyways, also, but there is a little adjustment here too. So maybe that is something I need to change if it's you know, not normal. I just don't know if it's normal for it to stick down like that when there's nothing hooked to it. I'm assuming it kind of is. And then the pressure from the clutch, once that's hooked up, will help force it back up. Anyways, it's kind of cool. Like I said, how it forces it up, but it also forces it down. Who would have thunk? Uh, yeah, we'll call this a video here. I'm back out in the shop today. And the next thing I'm going to do, it'll be in the next video or a different video. I don't know if it'll be next or what I got going on here, but I do have an I did it tilt steering column. So we're gonna put that in. And that's why I want to get that clutch spring in there. And I have to do a little bit. I'm still waiting on parts. The Apparently the 3 16th, 3 16th inch brake line is hard to come by right now. I've been, Summit keeps pushing back my ship date, but I still don't have more brake line, but I do have, no, well, I don't have it here right now, but I have a little brake junction block. I wanna screw to the top of the frame here. So before this is in the way, I'm gonna drill that out anyways. That'll be the next video. I don't know why I'm telling you now, just so you know what's coming up, I guess. That steering column, and I'm going to try and remove the rear end, put my new wheels and tires under there, get a measurement for the new rear end, and uh, once the wheels and tires are under the car, that's when I'll reveal them to you. So hopefully next video, come on back, you'll see what wheels and tires I picked, and uh, see if we're making any progress. 
Thanks again for watching. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Uh, we're growing slow, but man, we need to grow a little faster. Yeah, so uh, do that stuff for me. Don't forget to uh, use the link in the description to go to Amazon and buy whatever you need. That helps us grow here a little bit too. Helps us uh, pay for all these parts we're buying. And uh, yeah, come on back to the Montana garage. See what we're screwing up next.